Hey y'all, so I'm back here working on the truck. Got me some new uh, airlines for the transmission. I suck at it, but I love it. apologize in advance this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video uh, had a couple of things come up about three weeks in a row I hadn't had no time to work on the truck um, last weekend I was planning on a bunch of uh, progress but wound up replacing some posts on the uh, front porch of the house and when I went to do that found a bunch of wood rot and like everything one thing led to another and I didn't touch the truck so but I do have a little bit of things I'm gonna go over and uh, some exciting news. This finally came in. Super stoked about this. Uh, it's factory style bumper for my truck. Uh, Trey Birchfield uh, came through for me with this thing. He had a couple of these trucks and wound up uh, parting them out or selling them or whatever. And this is what he had left. Also have the uh, fog lights to go with it it's not perfect but it's got a few blemishes that in a crack or two i'm gonna have welded up but i cannot wait to get this thing on the truck it's a factory style bumper that it should have on it now the bumper that's on my truck now i have no idea what it what it's even from it's not an international at least not a 4070b part so this thing overall has real good bones i cannot wait to get that on it so Big shout out to Trey and his wife hooking me up, getting me a good deal on it. So I'm excited about that. I can't wait to get that garbage that's on my truck off of it. So back to my shifter stuff. Um, this is what I am messing with now. You saw me a couple of weeks ago tear this thing down. After cleaning it, um, it's got a lot more wear than I had hoped for. Uh, this was the seal that was in the front of it. Look how oblong that thing is. I did not distort it. Well, here I did, but right down here, all that metal that's missing, that's just how much wear was in this thing. Just totally ate out the bottom of the metal. And unfortunately, um, in here, lighting isn't the best you can see this bronze or uh i'm not sure if it's bronze this bushing that's in there brass colored if you turn it around look at that it has completely worn through it and started wearing into the metal so it's oblonged it i mean it's worse than i thought it was then the shifter itself it rides on that pin that goes in there and Look in the bottom of this box. You can see where the shifter has just been digging big old divots out of the bottom of the uh, the case, the housing. So I don't know exactly what caused that wear. It would have to be the uh, up and down movement in this shifter hole here. I know it has a little bit. It has to go... That oblong part of that egg shape is supposed to be there, I know, because the shifter has to move a little bit left or right. But it, I don't know if that pin has just worn or it's egged out way more than it should. That's allowing basically the end of the ball, I think the end of the ball, to dig into the bottom of the case. I'm gonna put it back together dry after it's cleaned up. And the top of that ball is worn real bad too. Can't really see it, but it's taking a lot of metal off of it. Uh, so I'm not sure this I showed you in the last video as well where it was right about where here it's got a pretty good divot in it a wear spot so I think putting a bushing in it where it goes into there would probably any more than I'm going to use it probably be okay but I don't know I'm going to put the word out there for a lower mileage unit, you know, somebody that's got a shifter, the whole, the whole arm 
So if anybody knows where one is out of a low mileage truck, I don't want one out of like a two million mile machine because in all likelihood it'll have the same problem. Uh, if I can't find that, I'm just gonna go ahead and see what I gotta do to fix it. Um, I want it to be right, so just replacing that bushing would probably get rid of most of the problem. I don't know that to be a fact, but the biggest problem was basically the left to right movement that was caused by that bushing. But So what I'm gonna do now is just, I gotta get a part number for this bushing that's in here and I'm hoping it's got one on it because I don't have a parts manual for this truck. If anybody does, holler at me and I'll buy it from you. Or if you've got a manual and you know the part number. Uh, I'm gonna try to set you up and I'm gonna try to knock this thing out of here. I need to get a part number off of it. If it has one, I'm not optimistic, but got on Facebook said it should have a part number on it. So see where we go with that. I'm honestly not sure what to even try to knock this out of here with. It's so, even even where it's not worn quite as badly, it's pretty brittle. I don't know if this is just gonna turn into one of those deals where it just breaks apart. Uh, Cause it's got a lot of wear. Down here it's worn, but up here at this part here, the opposite basically where it would be wearing, it's also worn here. So it's worn there and here. So the, it's basically worn out to match kind of that angle. I think I'm just gonna try to knock it down into it. Probably gonna absolutely destroy it. Folds up real easy. Not necessarily what I want it to do. Probably gonna pretzel this thing up like crazy. And just knocking chunks off of it. When I put pop this seal out, this whole uh, inside of where the seal, where that little spring is supposed to be on the lip, was just full of busted off chunks of this brass or whatever this stuff is. Bronze. Well, that has succeeded in just knocking chunks out of it. You can see though how much that thing is worn. I mean that's probably close to a sixteenth of an inch thick. Over here it's worn just completely gone. So it has a problem. Probably what's gonna happen here is I'm just gonna have to just get behind it and just fold the thing up. It's so brittle and soft. nothing really to beat on on this side it's got the exact same problem it's just been splintered spider web cracked I think I'm just gonna wedge a screwdriver down behind it and should be able to get it out without marring the cylinder up that's working pretty good just splitting it.
Oh yeah, that worked like a champion. In other news, um, a guy about two hours from here saw my truck on a Facebook post and contacted me and said that uh, he was pretty sure it was one his granddad bought uh, probably around 1980 when the truck would have been a year and a half old. And uh, after sending him some detail photos, we uh, pretty much confirmed that it is. He sent me um, three pictures of what my truck looked like 30 40 years ago and uh, that was really cool I'll post them up on here uh, it's worked hauling ag stuff and all kinds of things they're not real high quality real good pictures but I was thrilled to death just to find out anything about it so uh, I told him when I get the thing back on the road he's still a trucker that I could run it up there or he could come down here and drive it uh, so I was real happy to get some photos of my truck just out of the blue from back in the day when it was only a year and a half old. Uh, it also had the, the aluminum front bumper identical to the one I just bought and I'm gonna put on it. Uh, so, like I said, I'm happy about that. Kind of seeing it, what it looked like new, kind of makes me want to paint it in the in the original paint that it has on it now. But you let me know what you think about that. I'll take it into consideration, but I don't know. I like red, red and white, red, white, and black international colors, but I also, this factory paints growing on me. So let me know what you think. Two of them are actual Eatons. Two of them aren't, but go ahead and pull my uh, caps off, put these back on. Quick tech tip, I use the right stuff gray to plug ports, you know, that are gonna be outside in the weather. You don't ram it way down in there deep, but basically you just get a little squirt right in the end, seals out the moisture and it comes out clean. 
There's another one. No contamination in it, so you get you set up real quick. Funny story is I forgot to uh, take pictures of this. So I had to come back and uh, watch my videos again, which YouTube doesn't really want you to do. There she goes. If you watch your own videos too much, yeah, YouTube thinks that uh, all you're trying to do is get your view count up. So I had to borrow my wife's phone to watch all my uh, my own videos, see how these stupid lines go back on. These weren't too expensive. I mean, 15 to 25 bucks a line is about where most of them fell. I'm gonna over tighten them. Okay, that's one. I haven't been able to work on this in a while. The uh, getting dark early now, which is annoying. Been out of town a couple of weekends in a row. It's raining. Now it's dark by five minutes after I get off work, even though I guess work is 20 feet from here. I might just have to start coming out here. You know, starting the day earlier and knocking off an hour earlier to get some work done. I seem to have quite a few honeydews planned. Okay, let's reposition. I really cannot see if you can even see what I'm doing here. Okay, get my ports uncovered. Okay, I admit I cheated a little bit and did um, the back of one of these lines off camera. I don't know, there's just no room to get in here. It wasn't really that hard to find these lines. Um, none of them came from the same people, but they were all either eBay or just a Google search away. So if anybody else is fixing to do the same thing as this, they're not that hard to get a hold of. Uh, all right, that's about all I wanna crank that. Okay. Let's see. Do this one next. I'd recommend probably going with the Eaton lines. They seem to be a little better quality. This one I'm doing right here wasn't. The Eaton lines come with the uh, Teflon sealant stuff already on it. This I just had to use tape on. But I couldn't find the Eaton line for this particular length, so I had no choice.
this was a, uh, I guess it doesn't show the part number. It was a 55518. This is the only one that was any difficulty at all in finding. Not sure how well these seal based on how tight you get them. So, if I need to crank it a little tighter once I get the thing back running, I'll do so. I don't want to split any fittings or blow a hose apart. That one feels like it could be tighter, but I don't know. I assume some type of an o ring swivel fitting in there. So, I call that good. Alright, last line. This one feels a little loose. I assume there's an O-ring in there. I don't know. Kind of seems like that might leak when it starts. Only one way to find out, eh? I'm not too familiar with this type of line. Fortunately, this line is super easy to get to. Last part of this job is popping that guy back up. This clamp held these. I guess I'll put it back on. get some of the lines kind of in a kind of a kinked let's see all right that's money All right. That'll conclude uh, stage one of uh, replacing leaky lines. Although I'm concerned this little guy might leak. Seems loose. But find out soon enough.